Hello, I'm Eric Hansen, and I'm the Director of Product Management for Database Engine Features here at MemSQL. And today I'm going to talk to you about our single store initiative. So first, some history. Back in MemSQL 6.8 and earlier, we had what we call dual store. That means we had two different types of tables, row store tables and column store tables. Row store tables are for transactional type workloads. They're great for looking up a single row fast and updating that row and so forth. Column oriented tables are more oriented towards analytical workloads uh, where you're doing summaries and aggregations and so forth, but they're not, they were not as good at looking up a single row and updating a single row fast. So we had some issues with having two different table types. One is that the total cost of ownership for row-oriented tables was too high for some people. That was really the biggest issue. So we wanted to reduce total cost of ownership for applications that needed row-oriented type capabilities where you could look up and update a single row fast. Also, beyond just the total cost of ownership, people were having issues bumping into the total size of RAM as a limit on their database size with row stores. And also, people wanted to be able to do both fast individual row updates and query, as well as having their analytical queries that did big scans and hash joins and aggregations continue to run fast. So what we wanted to do was really kind of, you know, achieve all these goals with a change to the system that would give us outstanding total cost of ownership and allow databases bigger than RAM and maintain really fast analytical performance. So how do we do it? So over um, MemSQL 7.0 and 7.1, we've delivered uh, several features that are part of our single store initiative. And we're continuing that as we come out with MemSQL 7.5, which is uh, our, a planned future release. And again, when I'm talking about 7.0 and 7.1, these are things that we've already delivered. You can try them today with 7.5. So these are speculative. So exactly when they'll all come is not 100% confirmed. But for now, let's, let's say they'll be in MemSQL 7.5. With row-oriented tables, historically, let's look back at MemSQL 7.0. We added a sparse compression feature. This really isn't on the main thrust of our single store features, but it helped address the total cost of ownership issue for wide row store tables. So we had some customers that had some very wide, very large row store tables with like 300 plus columns and say a billion rows and took a lot of RAM. And a lot of their fields were null. So what we added was a sparse compression feature so that null valued fields would not take extra memory we just saw a very compact a compact bitmap that told us which fields were null and which were not null. And that way we could save up to 50% space for these very wide tables that were large, that had lots and lots of null values, like well over half null values. That really helped our total cost of ownership for that particular application on RowStore. But the main thrust of uh, single store is really on the right side of the screen. It's our improvements that we've done to column store to allow it to handle not just analytical workloads, but also transactional workloads. So in 7.0, we added the capability to do very fast seeks to find one or a few rows in a column store table based on a selective filter condition in a SQL query. And that was a feature called sub-segment access. So segments are million row chunks of a table. And once we know the position of a row within a segment in 7.0, we can very quickly seek into each separate column to pull back just the data that we need for that row and return the row. So it's, it's quite fast to do a seek, um, especially with fast disk device, like a fast SSD device to find just one row in a column store in 7.0. Now, you have to first, before you find, seek to get the row, you have to find out where it is. So we also, in order to allow that to be done faster, introduce secondary hash indexes for unique key lookups on column stores. 
Moving on to 7.1, we knew that people didn't want to just have simple queries that could do a, a, a select with a, a selective filter against one table to pull back a few rows, but they wanted that to work with join queries as well. So suppose you got a multi-way join with a very selective filter on one of the tables. You'd like to be able to seek into indexes on the join column on the other tables to pull back the rows you need. And we introduced that in 7.1, and I'm actually gonna demo that for you a little bit later. We also introduced support for single column unique constraints for with a single column unique hash index capability in 7.1, helping people do things like deduplication. So that's obviously a very commonly used feature in databases. We needed to provide that on tables that are bigger than will fit in RAM in order to achieve the total cost of ownership objectives that we had. And moving on to 7.5, again, this is speculative exactly when it will come, but we're building support for upserts and insert ignore. So people want to be able to do upserts that target a single store, our column stores extended with these new capabilities. Can't do that quite yet because um, <clears throat> we didn't implement it in 7.1, but we're working on it. And we're also uh, going to support faster seeks via a buffer pool. So right now, the column store doesn't have its own buffer pool. Instead, we rely on the operating system buffer pool to cache recently accessed data from the file system in RAM. And that works quite well, but we still have to copy bytes from the file system into our own address space before we operate on them. That takes a noticeable amount of time. We want to do even better. So we're going to introduce our own buffer pool for column store data that's in our address space in the MemSQL process. And that could speed up seek type operations several fold more than, and they're already pretty fast. And then we're gonna add support for multi-column hash indexes. Obviously people wanna be able to seek uh, with filter predicates on more than one column at a time. So that's a, a pretty common request. and multi-column unique constraints. So um, that is all in MemSQL's future. So I wanna describe a, a use case that puts together most of these features, three out of the four, it uses sub-segment access or it il illustrates sub-segment access, column store hash indexes and hybrid hash loop join. This is a performance highlight from our 7.1 release. So I created two tables, orders and line items, as you see there on the left. Orders has 33 and a half million rows. Line items had 67 million rows. And I created this join query on the right. First, I should say that each order has exactly two line items. I, I generated the data that way. This query on the right has a very selective filter on order, which is orders.date or D equals that constant right there. So, um, and then once we find the order that we're looking for, we have to join it to line items. So most database systems implemented using column stores will do this using what's called a hash join. So they'll do a hash build on the orders table and then scan the line items table and for each line item row, probe the hash table to see um, what joined. And they might do some segment elimination on the line items table so they don't have to scan exactly the entire thing. But in general, they have to scan all of line items and probe the hash table. So this could take a while because you're reading all of the line items. But, you know, an OLTP application will do this differently. There'll be an index on the join column of, of line item or line items on the, that's the OID column, and we'll pick the one row from, from orders that has that particular date and seek into the index on the join column on line items, and we'll find the two rows that we're looking for and return them, we're all done. It doesn't matter. We don't have to look at the entire line items table, so it can be a lot faster. That's called the nested loop join strategy. So in 7.1, we introduced a hybrid hash loop join operator Basically, it works like a hash join. We do a hash build on the line on the orders table in this case, build a hash table. It's only gonna have one row in it. We'll inquire in the hash table, is it really small? There's only a few rows in the hash table. 
and there's an index on the join column of the other table, then instead of scanning the other table and probing the hash table, we will look up through the index on the other table. So that's exactly what we do here with a hybrid hash loop join. And this query runs in one millisecond on MemSQL 7.1 on a, a tiny cluster with just one small leaf and one small aggregator. So that's stunningly fast. That is OLTP level fast on a column store for a highly selective join. I ran this on MemSQL um, 7.0 before, which didn't have this hybrid hash loop join thinking it would take a lot longer. St stunningly, it, it only took seven milliseconds on MemSQL 7.0. I thought it was gonna take like a 10th of a second or something. So I'm pretty surprised how good it was on 7.0. Just, that just shows how fast our filter capability is and our, how good our subsegment access was in 7.0, but now it's even better. It's you know, seven times again better. So let me demo it for you. So here's MemSQL Studio. Um, let me just prove to you how big the tables are. First, you know, here is the DDL that I ran to create the tables. So we've got order ID, D is the date time, where the sort key on orders is on D, we're sharding on OID, and the key, we've got a key using hash on OID. That means there's a hash index on the OID column. Similarly, on line items, we've got ID, OID, item, got a sort key on OID, sharding on OID, and there's a hash index on OID, all to facilitate fast lookup on OID. So um, I've already pumped up the data. I just wanna show you how much data there is. So here's um, the size of orders. So you see it's got 33 or so million rows in it. Now here's the size of line item. Line items have 67 million rows. All right, I created this query. Um, I, I picked out one order that's the as exactly two, you know, you know, based on this date, I know there's only one order record with that particular date. And I'm going to run this query, which is going to pick one row from order, do a hash build. The hash table will have only one row in it. The hybrid hash join algorithm will say, oh, there's only one row. So uh, if there's a join, if there's an index on the OID column of L, I will seek into the index instead of doing the hash join. So let's try this. So, okay, you see I got two rows back. So now um, what we can do is we can do a profile of that query. See, it says it only took one millisecond. and Here's the hash join. Here's the orders table. We, you know, we scan orders, apply this super selective filter. One row comes back, and we end up probing line items to get the matching rows. You saw it said one millisecond in my profile that that actually ran the query. You know, it gave us the explain plan tree, and it actually ran the query to give us statistics about it to show how long it took to run. But just since I only ran it one time, um, I, I wanted to you know, try a little more, to get a little more granular estimate of how long it took. So I wrote the stored procedure to run the query in a loop and compute the runtime in milliseconds. So it's, it's gonna return the runtime in milliseconds. So I'm gonna run it 500 times in a loop with the stored procedure. It ran in 0 0.859 milliseconds on average, so less than one millisecond on average. That's it. Um, I wanted to uh, thank you all for listening to this uh, presentation about MemSQL Single Store and give it a try in your applications and see what you can do with it. Thank you.